Unleash the power of knowledge and connect with the heartbeat of the African diaspora. Download our African Diaspora News Channel app now on Google Play and Apple App Store. Stay informed with authentic and diverse perspectives, breaking news and cultural insights. Immerse yourself in a community that celebrates unity, resilience and progress. Experience the vibrancy of the diaspora at your fingertips. Don't miss out. Empower your perspective today. Search African Diaspora News Channel and join the conversation. Today's story ventures into a place that embodies a complex legacy within South Africa's journey towards reconciliation and unity. Hello everyone, my name is Nalidia Mpula and it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to the latest edition of the African Diaspora News Channel, where we unravel the stories that shape our world and our communities. Today we dive deep into the currents of information from the pulse of politics to the heartbeat of entertainment. We've got it all covered, so please stay tuned for news experience like no other. Plainfontein, a town in Pretoria nestled away from the bustling city life, the rural settlement stands as a reflection of the racial divides that continue to challenge the ideals of a post-apartheid nation. Now imagine driving through roads less traveled only to be met by a well-kept shrine honoring the architecture of apartheid, surrounded by a landscape where old symbols and a certain similarity persist. Now this is the reality at Linfontaine's entrance. Every corner from the local coffee shop to the community bank presents a picture of an era we all thought we had surpassed and an all white community bound by firm criteria that exclude based on race and culture. Now it's been 30 years since South Africa turned the page on apartheid aiming to create a new tapestry of diversity and inclusion, yet communities like Glenfontaine and Orania ignite debate about what kind of a country South Africa aspires to actually be. Let's, let's take a look. Protected by armed men, Andre Betenbach is the leader of this movement. His aim is to create an independent state where no black people are allowed. But I can tell you, the, the white people in this country, they do not do it. If the train is late, we do not put the train to fire. And if the buses are late, we don't put the buses on fire. And we are, if we are unsatisfied with the services delivered, we don't start throwing stones and burning tires and, and those kind of things. That's, uh, that's one of the main differences between us and the black people in South Africa. Uh, the way they behave and it's not us that have to change our attitude they have to change their behavior if they want to be reckoned as civilized people then they should act like civilized people not civilized well they must demonstrate that they are civilized then we will believe that they are civilized it's an openly racist rhetoric for andre breitenbach the residents of Glenfontein, holding firm to their Dutch Afrikaner heritage, argue for protection against perceived threats, seeking solace in seclusion. Now, in Glenfontein, the Afrikaans language, Protestant Christianity, and descendant from the Dutch poor trekkers are the criteria for belonging. Now, this community claims not racism but the protection of their culture as the reason for their exclusivity. They envision their community as a century to preserve language and culture amidst modern policies and societal changes they find alienating. But to many South Africans, Glenfontaine represents not a old-fashioned hind hold out of heritage but a painful echo of a segregated past refusing to fade. And yet the exclusion of others based on race painfully echoes the apartheid era, raising questions about reconciliation, unity 
in today's South Africa. We're engaging as unequal partners, as black people and white people in this country. And you know, I'm ashamed to say that some people on social media are saying, Kim, you're helping to liberate us. And I want to like cry because I want to, I say, you know what, I'm the oppressor. As long as I hold onto my ill-gotten wealth and land, I'm the oppressor. I've got nothing, a white person has got nothing to do with a black struggle. We are just creating and reinforcing Oppress a, 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 an oppressive, structurally racist system. So not for one minute. We, we cannot engage as unequal partners. So until we see land returned unconditionally in this country and ill-gotten wealth returned, uh, I do not believe that reconciliation is something that we should, we should value. In fact, as I said earlier in the interview, it's delaying black liberation. And I used to think why, you know, maybe there was just a compromise and it was done mm. on, um, you know, naivety of the ANC. But my perspective now is it was deliberate. The, the objective was to keep white power intact in a post-democratic... In the broader reality of South Africa's democratic journey, Glenford Dane and similar communities like that of Orania pose a philosophical conundrum balancing the fine line between a community's right to cultural self-determination and the imperative to foster an inclusive society that transcends historical decisions. Now, the controversy surrounding Kleinfontein lays bare the ongoing struggle in reconciling these two ideals. Yet, despite the challenges, South Africa navigates through these turbulent waters with vigilance and hope. The spirit of Ubuntu, meaning humanity towards others, guides the nation toward a future where communities like Glenfontein can evolve from isolated echoes of the past to a more integrated part of a vibrant, multifaceted society. I do think that as we reflect upon Glenfontein's story, let it not be with despair, but with the resolve to foster dialogue, understanding, and ultimately reconciliation. For in every chapter of South Africa's story lies an opportunity, which is an opportunity to learn, to heal, and to grow stronger together. Thank you so much for watching. Until we need to meet next time, let our conversations and actions contribute to creating a more unified fabric for all South Africans. We want to hear from you. Please, let's engage in the comments section and be sure to give this video a thumbs up. That is it from me. Till we meet again, it is goodbye for now.